Closed captioning for the Let's Dine Out show provided by Holiday Cafe, your neighborhood diner with two locations in Ontario and Mr. D's Diner in Laverne. Ready to satisfy your hunger and budget? Let's Dine Out is made possible by support from Food for Life Baking Company, makers of over 60 organic, all-natural sprouted baked goods, as well as gluten-free and vegan products. Food for Life Baking Company, dedicated to better health since 1964. Foodforlife.com. Sanborn's Air Conditioning and Heating, providing installation, maintenance, and repair of heating and air conditioning systems for home and businesses throughout the Inland Empire. Sanborn's Air Conditioning and Heating, five-star comfort for four generations. Sanbornsac.com. And viewers like you, supporting local public television. Thank you. I'm food critic Alan Borgen, member of the Southern California Restaurant Riders. I've been finding the best restaurants in the Inland Empire and Southern California for over 27 years. This is my job. This is my passion. Let's dine out. Hi, I'm food critic Alan Borgen. And I'm Trisha Jansen. Welcome to another delicious edition of the Let's Dine Out Show, where we're going to show you some of the best local restaurants in the Inland Empire and throughout Southern California. You know, when you think of Colton, you don't think of, <laughs> of Colton being a, let's say, a hot uh, culinary um, dining destination area. No. However, we found two restaurants that we're going to deal with tonight that are pretty amazing. Yeah, you know, it's right off the freeway. It's very easy to get to. And Colton is kind of, they have some progress going on here. Yeah. They're trying to rebuild the city and trying to make it a more of a hot spot. So let's stay tuned to see what happens here in Colton. <laughs> Sounds great. What's on today's menu? <sighs> First, we visit Sushi Miguel style for some unique sushi rolls. Then a short distance away, it's off to Le Rendezvous Cafe for a wonderful array of French and American dishes. So sit back and enjoy our dining adventures in Colton. Located on Valley Boulevard in Colton is Sushi Miguel style restaurant. The clean Japanese inspired dining room is divided into two eating areas along with a nice sushi bar with a giant blue marlin hanging over it. Owner and sushi chef Miguel Aguirre and his wife Annabelle along with their other talented sushi chefs are friendly and accommodating and judging from the devoted locals who dine here, Sushi Miguel style is one popular restaurant. Okay, let's get started. You know, this restaurant has a very unique um, element to it. It certainly does. Miguel, the owner, yeah. I've known him for about 20 years, 25 years or so. He worked at Sayaka, which is down the block, a big, very big, uh, pretty famous um, Japanese restaurant. Yeah. And he started off as a dishwasher, then he was a cook, and then he learned how to make sushi for about 19, 20 years. The American dream. So it's really amazing. and. The other interesting thing about this restaurant is it's almost 100% run by Hispanics. I mean, this is the first Japanese restaurant I've ever been to, outside of Mexico probably, <laughs> that's Hispanic and you know, has the, inf the infusion and um, the, the, the influences, influences of, of, of the it. flavors. Yeah. Yeah. But it's pretty amazing stuff. And the sushi is true. I mean, this, you go to any restaurant, this is top quality of sushi. Well, it's sushi Miguel's style. It's his style of you his know me Mexican influence. Yeah, I mean, it's it's... It's traditional, but yet it's not. So it's fun. We want you to enjoy it. So let's get going. Let's do the first dish. All right, we had mixed tempura. It's six ninety-five. Now this, I think, was a pretty standard presentation. Very uh, nicely done. It had two large shrimp. There was some acorn, uh, acorn squash, zucchini, onion ring, uh, sweet potato, and broccoli. And then it came with a ponzu uh, dipping sauce. You know, I mean, I thought it was great. You know, typical. Uh, nothing. Hispanic about this, no. <laughs> this uh, what I, what tempura. I, what I liked about it was it was, it was really crisp it was. and not greasy. And the trick to making True. tempura with your batter is it's got to be ice cold water. Right. Next came the three item combination plate. This came with spicy pork, chicken teriyaki, and a pork cutlet 
Fourteen fifty. Now you get the choice of a lot, nine or ten yeah, there's a lot different, of different items. Options. Those are the ones we chose. Yep. Uh, the spicy pork was delicious. Had a sweet soy sauce, a little kick to it, a late mm -hmm. kick. That's what it I liked did. about it. And caramelized onions, which made it nice. That and made sweet. all the difference. Then the chicken, um, teriyaki chicken. Was well, mm -hmm. teriyaki chicken? Nothing fancy. But then the next one I really like. It's a ton tenkatsu pork cutlet. Um, it, it was panko crusted and then deep fried. I loved that. It was crispy, it was nice, uh, tender inside. It came with a tonkatsu sauce, which is a Japanese barbecue sauce, but I thought it was excellent. Just a really nice combination plate. Yeah, I agree. The portion was huge. Um, for $14.50, you just can't go wrong. I love the spicy pork. I thought it was sweet and had that late kick, so it was really good. Good stuff. Next, Miguel Special Southern California Burrito, $13.50. <laughs> Again, this is Miguel style here. Yes. This is a large soy wrapper, then it had uh, pieces of fresh tuna, salmon, yellowtail, albacore, ono, some lettuce, imitation crab, then it's rolled up kind of like a burrito. And then on top of it, they put spicy mayo, wasabi mayo, eel sauce, sriracha sauce, and also Japanese chili oil, green onions, and sesame seeds. Whew. And again, this is like a burrito. However, I've never had a burrito this messy. With fish in it. <laughs> With fish in it's it, but it, it was delicious. I like really the idea was. of just grabbing it and just Arr. But it was messy to eat. Now, yeah. you mentioned as a woman, I wouldn't order this in public. Why? Well, as a disclaimer, I usually have my girls back here. And it's, it's a dish that it's too big to manage with your, uh, with your chopsticks. And you can't really cut it's it. It's a burrito. It is a burrito. Kind of. <laughs> Kind of. It's just, it's messy, but the flavors were great. I mean, if you're not, if you don't mind getting in there and getting it all over the place. Well, that's what <laughs> not a good, not a good date night. That's what being a foodie is about, right? It is, it is. Just diving in your private, maybe get it to go. <laughs> Next, we had Miguel's Special Volcano Roll, fourteen fifty. This is nori with rice, avocado, salmon, yellowtail, snapper, ono, imitation crab, and then it's rolled up. Then they slice it into nine pieces and lay it out. They top it with imitation crab, spicy mayo, and they bake it for f about five minutes. Then when it comes out, they add more of the spicy mayo, um, that sweet eel sauce, sesame seeds, sesame oil, some sriracha, and a little green onion. You know, this had such a great flavor. I love, I, sometimes a baked roll, I think because the mayo gets baked into it so it's creamy and has that nice flavor to it. And I like the slight heat to it. You know, not too spicy, but just a little bit of a heat. Plus it was crispy on top from mm -hmm. baking it. And, a little uh, bit. No, I thought this is nice. I like sushi that's baked. I know I've had it with salmon before and it's, it's something about it. I think it's, it's warm. It's comforting. It's comforting. On a, on a cold day, this yeah. is perfect. And yeah. Just, I love the creaminess of it. I do too. I thought it was great. Good stuff. Next came, let's see here. We got Miguel's special baked lobster roll. Fourteen fifty. Now this is basically a California roll. Now it's not lobster; it's actually crawfish. The mm -hmm. little tails from it. It's baked. It's put wasabi and spicy mayo on top of it. Yep. It's baked. It's cut up into about ten pieces. It's plated, and then it has eel sauce, spicy mayo, uh, eel sauce, more eel sauce on it, uh, wasabi sauce, and spicy mayo. <laughs> it's, I repeat myself. That's a lot of sauce. I think they put it on twice here. They do. Um, what's nice? I like the presentation. Uh -huh. And I love the, um, the I love the flavor of the crawfish. Crawfish is sweet. It is. And it's tender. And I, mm -hmm. I love the crawfish. And there's a lot of it. You know, with the bake rolls, what I like is that they add the sauces and they bake them with the sauce. And then they add them again. So you get the, it's different when they bake it. The flavor layers. changes a little bit. So it's nice layers of flavor. Right. You know, they also make another version of this. It's called the popcorn roll, 1350. And it's basically a California roll. Same ingredients. However, it's fried, not baked. And a ton of fried crawfish. I mean. Yeah. A ton. This is an ocean full of Yeah, you, it's definitely a great presentation on that one and yeah. definitely could share I think we that. like the other one better, but... For sure. Yeah, for I sure. would definitely order that. Next, we had Hot Night Roll. Boy, that sounds like... <laughs> sounds like a hot night. Hot night. Ten fifty. This is the nori. It's rice. It has cream cheese in it. Avocados. It's stuffed with spicy tuna. It's topped with eel sauce, spicy mayo on top, and then it's deep fried. You know, I love the flavors of this one. I thought, I love the crunch, first of all. You, you know, you go to get it, and it's, it's not super pretty to look at like some of the other ones, um, but the crispy, crunchy outer, and then you get that warm cream cheese. And I'm like, okay, I love this one. And I want to interject something here. A lot of you I know don't like sushi. I, I can't tell you how many people yeah. I meet, I mentioned sushi, and I hear, eh, I don't sushi. Like it. I get that sushi face. Really, you owe it yourself to try it. Not everything, in your mind, you may think everything's raw and everything, but it's all about flavors and textures. Plus, when they make sushi, it's, it's an artwork. I mean, we highly suggest sitting in front For when sure. you make it 
on the on the you know table there and watching it. Sushi bar. Sushi bar. Yeah. Because it's really a work of art. They take a lot of time learning how to do it. And the flavors, it's not just eating raw fish. I mean, you're not a seal. I mean, you're eating it, you're eating something that's that's considered a real uh, sensation, a real Well, treat. and the last few dishes were not raw. They right. were baked. So again, it's it's not technically sushi. At least baked. try it before you go, ew. <laughs> we like to that. say ew. A lot of people do. Yeah. Then we had the amazing roll. And it is amazing. 1150. This is nori, it's rice, it's tempura shrimp imitation crab and then it's rolled in top with spicy tuna sliced avocado wasabi sauce eel sauce spicy mayo and then they coat it with panko breadcrumbs on top which is kind of a nice crunch then of course they put the little green onion you know it's such a pretty roll number one to look at i love the colors pretty. It, it is pretty we eat with our eyes right we eat with our eyes it's um the panko adds a little bit of crunch but it has a very fresh flavor to it i just i really like this roll it is amazing it is a good roll i to have get. nothing to add to that i agree with you okay I'm wow not. shocking okay. Then the last dish we had is called the Flying Saucer Miguel style. <laughs> it's $25, but wait folks, this is what you get. Lots and lots of fish. This is uh, basically, you get yellow albacore, yellowtail, mm -hmm. tuna, fresh ono, salmon, octopus. Then inside, uh, in the middle, is pickled onions, Miguel style pickled onions. It's a little <laughs> salty, a little tangy. The dressing is amazing. It's a spicy ponsu yeah. sauce. Yeah. with green onions and a special Japanese chili oil, and just delicious. You mentioned ceviche, and it's very close to it. That's not, what it reminds it's me It's not marinated, but when it soaks up into the mm -hmm. rice, that's what you get. Yeah, the flavors very much reminded me, obviously it's a Japanese dish, but it had the familiar flavors of ceviche. So it's like, it's a fusion of ceviche and, and sashimi type. With a little heat. With a little heat. It's very good and right. very fresh. Good stuff. Okay, what are your favorite dishes? You know, I really love the Miguel Special Baked Lobster Roll. I had, that was my first star that I put on there. I love the flavors. I love the hot night roll. Who doesn't want to have a hot night? <laughs> That's so good. The cream cheese can't go wrong. And the amazing. It just, it was amazing. Okay. I like the three item combination plate. I mm -hmm. love the spicy pork. I like the pork cup. Excellent. Yep. I like Miguel Special Baked Lobster slash, yeah. <laughs> what do you call it, crawfish yeah. roll. Sweet. And I really like the Flying Saucer Miguel style. I mean, it's a little pricey, I think, for what you get. However, it's delicious and well worth it. Well worth so, it. Where are we off to next? Well, we've had our Mexican-Japanese uh, fix. Now we're going to get some French-American cuisine at Le Rendezvous, just down the street. Wee oui, wee. Oui. <laughs> so French fries. Stay tuned for some more good eats. That's all I know. Located on Valley Boulevard and 9th Street in Colton stands Le Rendezvous Cafe. Once the site of a well-known restaurant chain, this family-friendly restaurant features an outstanding array of freshly made traditional as well as original French and American breakfast, lunch, and dinner items that are delicious. Thanks to executive chef Manny Gamboa and Russell Salvato, who oversees the front of the restaurant, Le Rendezvous Cafe is a new and exciting addition to the local dining scene. Well, here we are at La Rendezvous Cafe, which is about, what, 50, 75 yards? Five steps. <laughs> from the sushi restaurant. Yes. And I'll tell you, this is a really interesting restaurant. I went by here, and this used to be like a Bob's Big Boy or one of those chain restaurants. And from the outside, it doesn't look that exciting. And even when you walk in, now, this is fairly new. They just moved here, so right. it needs some decoration. But the food is amazing. And now, they were the owners of Le Rendezvous, which has been around Correct. for, what, 30 something years yes. in San Bernardino, which is now closed. But it's the same management, same chef, same everything. Same staff. They brought here. Yeah. And pretty much the same food plus more. Yeah. You know, they have big plans for the decor here, so we're excited to see what they're going to do. But the food speaks for itself. The food is fabulous. So I can't wait to get into it. Are you Speaking ready? Of fabulous, let's jump into All it. All right. This is exciting. First dish we had as a breakfast item was a pan pardu which is actually French toast, 1095. <laughs> That's a French name, we're in a French restaurant now. 
This is thick sliced um, Texas toast that's dipped in the egg and then dipped with a graham cracker, sugar, cinnamon, and almond mixture. <laughs> then it's grilled with butter on a flat pan. It's flipped over and then they take it out and they put a mascarpone cheese on it, which they put on top of it and melt it a little bit. Then um, it's cut in half and topped with blueberries, strawberries, raspberry, dusted with uh, powdered sugar, and it has a raspberry sauce, caramel sauce, and just a big glob of whipped cream. This was delicious. I love the crunchiness of it. Yeah. I, I really like this dish. My only complaint was the mascarpone cheese. They melt it, and when it, when it melts, it kind of dissipates, so you can't see it. When you yeah. we kind of you know took it apart, and we couldn't see anything white in there. Yeah. But other than that, it's it was delicious. Also, instead of mascarpone, I'd rather just see cream cheese in there. Yeah. A, it's less expensive for them, and the average person it doesn't add that much to it. I think in the French toast. Yeah, I agree. I'd like to see. I think the ratio of the bread with the cream would be better if it had more. I actually like how crispy it is. That's one thing that I noticed. You know, French toast for me is always a failure because it's not crispy enough, and I. I love how they crunch, they oh. have the almonds on it and it just it retains its crunch. So that part I loved about it. And I think the flavor's great. Mm -hmm. So next, buckle up, Monte Cristo sandwich, eleven ninety five. Now that's something we always talk about. It's like where can you find a Monte Cristo other than Disneyland, of that's, course. Blue Bio is the only place <laughs> I know you. that's to me where I judge them all by. Well folks, we found one. So it's eleven ninety five, like I said. It's white bread. They use a cranberry aioli and, and I thought, do they really? But they do. Cranberry aioli, ham turkey, Swiss cheese, it's egg battered and grilled with powdered sugar, served with a jalapeno fig jelly, which is just amazing. It has just enough kick to it. You know, it's salty, it's creamy, it's sweet. It has a little bit of spice to it. I love the ham, real smoky. The Very first thing smoky. you get is the smokiness I of agree. that. And I think it's, it's absolutely brilliant to have the jalapeno fig I jelly. Agree. Usually it's currant or something other yeah. kind of jelly. Too sweet. This was excellent. Yeah. Very, very good. It's perfect comfort food. And for eleven ninety five, the chair beats it's a lot cheaper than going to Disneyland to have it. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Okay. Next, pastrami and Swiss burger, eleven ninety five. Now again, I wasn't sure that I wanted to have that. A burger's a burger. Yeah. But this is no ordinary burger. This is a, a pound, a half pound hand formed uh, patty. It's chuck steak, so it's eighty twenty. Yep. It's seasoned and grilled. Then there's uh, pastrami and Swiss cheese that's grilled too. It's piled on a brioche bun yep. with, uh, let's see, lettuce, tomato, onion, pickles. It's got a roumelade sauce and a big toothpick to keep it in place. Yeah, it's and huge. then arugula, some kind of um, arugula. arugula with, I guess, olive oil or something yeah. on it. I, I really enjoyed this, however, there was so much in it, so much going on, and it, it didn't, did not hold up to the brioche bun. The bottom just, it just kind of melted through it. And I, I would like to see a bigger bun, maybe a Kaiser roll that's grilled a little bit better. Something to hold it up because it's virtually impossible. This is like a two or three hander. I mean, this is a really hefty burger. Taste wise, it was great. It was just fell apart. A different bun would be perfect. I completely disagree. <laughs> okay, well. I liked the brioche bun. I thought it added a very nice flavor to it. I don't like when there's too much bread. So for me, it was the perfect combination with the, and yes, it didn't hold up. You know, falling apart, did that bother you? No, the flavors were the so princess, good. Princess, you, you, you don't mind that? No, I didn't mind it. I thought this burger was really spot okay. on. I love that they hand formed the burger and I love the flavors in it. And they put a little grill on the pastrami, so it almost has a bacon-like <laughs> texture to it. I love the burger. And of course, arugula. It has arugula, so I love it. I, I loved it. I just say get rid of the bun, that's it, but whatever. All right, next we had Meatloaf Bordelais 1595. Mm. Now again, this is you're hard pressed to find great meatloaf. Well, folks, yes. we found it. Um, this is 10 ounces of ground chuck. Um, it has breadcrumbs, eggs, onions, typical seasonings. It's baked and topped with a honey mustard glaze. And I love honey, any kind of honey glaze on meatloaf. I do that at home. And then they top it with mushroom Bordelais sauce. First of all, I think it's the best meatloaf personally that I've had out dining out. It's huge. I mean, 10 ounces of meatloaf, it's, it's like, <laughs> it's enough for many people. If I was a piece of meatloaf, it would look like me. <laughs> it would be the Allen portion. Yeah. Um, the mushroom, the Bordelais sauce are great, and the mashed potatoes and veg it comes with. I mean, the potatoes are so buttery, and the vegetables are nice and crisp. You know, it's it's just a great meal. When you want comfort food, well, it's, it's like, elevated. What's nice like, like about the meatloaf, it didn't have too much breadcrumbs in it. No. It wasn't yet real dense. Sometimes you have meatloaf with all meat and nothing. You know, it has perfect texture to it, and yeah. absolutely delicious. And great flavor. Right. Great flavor. Really good. Speaking of great flavor, next we had coffee crusted ribeye. Okay. $28.95. This is a 12 ounce piece of ribeye coated with a coffee rub, which 
you know, it just gives such a great flavor to it. The ribeye was so tender. Then it's topped with blue cheese and then a balsamic glaze. So you've got this wonderful flavor from the beef that's perfectly cooked and, and just tender. Then you have the, uh, the saltiness of the blue cheese on it and then this sweet balsamic glaze. It's like, it's a party in my mouth. <laughs> you were in the kitchen where I saw it being made, but they grilled it on a flat pan with butter. They do. Well, of course it so has it butter. butter. It's a French it restaurant. Cooking. There's butter and everywhere. the blue cheese, they use a torch. So it's mm -hmm. basically so flambe torch. So it has a torch flambe. Kind of, yeah. I have to say, on this one, we added the French onion soup. Again, oh, very wow. hard to find great French onion soup. You can add, it, everything comes with the, the dinner entrees come with a salad. Um, but if you want to get the soup, I believe they deduct $2, $2. off. Yeah. So um, this had great flavor development in the soup. And of course, the cheese and the tomato. It was just, it was great. He knows how to make a French onion soup the yeah. way it's supposed to be made. Very, very good. Next came one of my favorites, Salmon Paul Bocuse. This is $23.95. Now this is named after a real prominent uh, French chef who um, he was associated with Nouvelle Cuisine. And he really, he, he was into classic French, but he brought it to a different level. Mm -hmm. And this it. is amazing. This is a seven ounce beautiful salmon filet poached in butter. Then they added shallots, Provence de Sol, and then they added cream and white wine. Absolutely delicious. Oh, the was, sauce. The was sauce is amazing. amazing yeah. It was served with quinoa and fresh veggies. Absolutely stupendous. Yeah, it was really good. Now here's another winning dish. This is chicken roulade, 1995. Uh, inside it, they stuff it with sauteed uh, mushrooms and fresh spinach, ricotta cheese, and then it's rolled up into the chicken. It's dipped into flour and then an egg wash. Then they use panko crumbs and they get a nice get a good and, crunch on it. it. Mm -hmm. Then they deep fry it. So that gives it the, oh. the crispy flavor to it yeah. and the texture. And then it's finished in the oven. Yeah. Then they cut it up in three slices and it's served with a beurre blanc sauce, which oh. is cream, lemon, yeah. wine, butter, and shallots. And it comes with the veggies and mashed potatoes. Again, just delicious. You know, this restaurant, I mean, it's not just French. It's more continental. And I know they want to do a little bit more Cajun uh, influenced dishes, which yep. again, were the French influences. And this is just a, a spectacular dinner. Then we had dessert. Mm. Shall I go on? Well, you had dessert. I had dessert. This is the upside down apple walnut pie, $7.95. What I like about the presentation is that it, it is upside down, thus the name. Um, it's salty, sweet, and buttery. That's, those are the notes I have. So you get the, t the topping first. You get like the crust, if you will. So it's, it's the crunched up walnuts with a brown sugar and butter, and it's crunchy and buttery. And you get it's the just, ice cream that just kind of There's ice cream off to the side, and, and there's a car they make a homemade caramel sauce, but the, I don't care about those. <laughs> Or the whipped cream. It reminded me of a, like a big apple. It did. I just, I love, it was the, the crumble on the top was just made out of walnuts, butter, and brown sugar. It was just so, mm. so good. Very Loved good. it. So. I'm glad you left some for me. Right. I did, actually. <laughs> you did? I did. Oh, I'm It's so in good. the kitchen. Afterwards, I'll get it. So. Yeah. In terms of the best dishes, this is really hard. I really enjoyed everything, but mm -hmm. I would say the ones that really got me were the meatloaf uh, bourrelet mm -hmm. was outstanding. Yes. The salmon, again, I, you can't get any better, and the chicken roulade. I mean, those three just really stood out, but anything you order on this menu, I got a feeling it, everything is good. I can't wait to eat, to eat here again. I know. You know, honestly, there wasn't one thing I didn't like, so it was very hard for me to pick. I would say the meatloaf for sure was one. The coffee crusted ribeye, that was just such a, that was a perfect bite of love. And then for my third, I'm going to have to say the Monte Cristo, just because it's like an it, old okay. classic and it's hard to find and it's just, uh, it's just the perfect comfort food. Questions or suggestions for the Let's Dine Out Show? Contact Alan or Tricia or visit letsdineoutshow.com. You know, one thing about this restaurant, unlike the other Le Rendezvous, the original one, it's a lot less stuffy, it's a lot more family oriented, and a lot more diverse menu. It's not upper. French, it's a little bit of everything. Well, they're offering breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which is nice. Um, you know, if you're coming just for a quick lunch, you know, from work or whatever, it's easy and accessible. And I like they have a kid's menu, and this is somewhere where you can bring the whole family now, where the other one was more of a special occasion restaurant. This is one you can come every week. <laughs> I can't wait to eat through the menu. For sure, it's delicious. It's really good stuff, so. Well, there it is, two great restaurants at Colton, and hopefully we'll be back again for some more. Until next time, Food Critic Alan Borgen. And I'm Trisha Jansen. Happy eating, everybody. Let's dine out. Dude, like, I need like sunglasses. That is not Diane Sawyer. I'm telling you right now. There is no way in hell that's Diane Sawyer. That's as Diane Sawyer as it gets.
Come right. on. Seriously? There you go. Now you're Diane Sawyer over here. Look good. You look good. You look great. I look okay. great if you're blind. <laughs> good evening. My name. When you said good like, evening, I wanted I was busting, I was like, I'm Mr. Rourke, your host. <laughs> Welcome yeah. to Fantasy Island. <laughs> That's what I wanted right. to say. I was gonna say, and I'm your host, Mr. Rourke. <laughs> Closed captioning for the Let's Dine Out show provided by Holiday Cafe, your neighborhood diner with two locations in Ontario and Mr. D's diner in Laverne. Ready to satisfy your hunger and budget? Let's Dine Out is made possible by support from Food for Life Baking Company, makers of over 60 organic, all-natural sprouted baked goods, as well as gluten-free and vegan products. Food for Life Baking Company, dedicated to better health since 1964. Foodforlife.com. Sanborn's Air Conditioning and Heating, providing installation, maintenance, and repair of heating and air conditioning systems for home and businesses throughout the Inland Empire. Sanborn's Air Conditioning and Heating, five-star comfort for four generations. Sanbornsac.com and viewers like you supporting local public television. Thank you.